friends today we are going to discuss an important topic which is the difference between crystallite grain and particle as we see that many material science students are sometimes confused on these topics so here in this video we will discuss on the difference between crystallite grain and particle so here we start with the crystallite so what is a crystallite so by definition a crystallite is a portion of the crystal that diffracts light coherently. This definition comes from the XRD X-ray diffraction. Now let us see what does it mean. So let us consider this is a small part of the crystal. Now X-rays are falling on this. So the, when X-rays fall, they are not diffracting from this crystal. But at a particular angle, when it obeys Bragg's law, these waves are diffracted and observed by the detector. So this is the simple technique of X-ray diffraction. In case if we plot this, what will we get? So if we plot the angle of incidence and the intensity, we will find that at some particular angle, depending on the diffraction plane, you will observe some peaks. So at that particular angle, you will get a spike and after that, there will be no signal at all. But now let us consider there is not just one part of the crystal but there are two or similarly there are many parts of the crystal. During crystal growth because of point or line defects the orientation of the crystal may change somewhat. Now when x-rays fall on these samples they will diffract light at slightly different angles. So in this case if you make plot of its XRD pattern we will find that the X-rays are diffracting at slightly different angles so we will observe a broad peak instead of a single line. The relation between the crystallite size and the full width half maxima of these peaks is known as Scherer's formula. So in this Scherer formula K is a constant, lambda is the wavelength of the X-ray radiation Theta is the angle of incidence of the X-ray radiation and beta is the FWHM of this peak. As you can observe in this formula that the crystallite size and the FWHM are inversely proportional. As the crystallite size decreases, the width of the peak FWHM increases and you will observe broader peaks in your XRD pattern. So as a summary, we can say that if the crystallite is big then we observe particular defined sharp peaks in our XRD pattern as the size of crystallite decreases so these peaks get a little bit broader and if we further decrease its size we will observe further broadness in these peaks so in this way the crystallite is defined as the average size of the portion which diffracts light coherently in XRD. Now let us move towards the definition of a grain. To understand the definition of grain, let us first take an example of a liquid drop. This is the shape of a liquid drop under the effect of gravity. We don't want this, we like this drop. So let us pick one of the drop. Now how would you define a drop? So if you know some science about surface tension, you must know that a liquid drop in itself has two portion one is the inner portion and second is the outer surface the difference between them is that the part of a drop in the inner part is interacting equally in all the directions but the part of the drop situated near the surface is interacting towards one side so as a result the surface of water acts like a stretched membrane so how would you define a drop then a drop is a small column of liquid bounded by a stretch membrane of that liquid. Altogether, they form a drop. On the similar basis, let us discuss about the definition of a grain. In material science, the material bounded by a boundary of the same material, collectively they form a grain. In this, the inner part is now called as the bulk of the grain and the outer boundary is called as the grain boundary. But how could we match this definition with the definition of a drop? Does the property 
of grain boundary differ from the property of the bulk and the answer is yes so there are substantial evidences generally studied as core shell structure the density of some elements is higher in outer shell than the core or also in impedance spectroscopy it has been observed that the grain boundaries are more resistive than the bulk there are many other theories supporting this fact when a crystal grows so there are several nucleation centers the nucleation centers are shown by the blue color the crystal starts to grow around those nucleation centers and in this figure there is some special kind of distribution of atoms in which we can define their grain boundaries so they are somewhat different in their order or their arrangement so in this way we can define a grain now let us move our discussion about the particle okay, let's take an example let me put three drops of liquid together but they are still separated by their boundaries now you are looking at them as a single cluster like this in case of material science when the material is not transparent you cannot clearly identify the grain boundaries present in the depth the main thing in this is that you may get some clues at some places about the grains and the grain boundaries but as a whole it looks like one so in that case you define this as a particle so now let us compare a crystallite a grain and a particle so let us start the comparison between grain and the particle this is a grain by definition you know and in case when each grain is discreetly present in your sample in that case your grain is same as your particle so you can also claim that grain and particle are the same and you can switch between these two definitions but in the case when one side you have a grain and on another side you can't find them discreetly so there are basically in a combination so overall this is a particle so in that case obviously the grain size is smaller than the particle size now let us discuss about crystallite and grain so a crystallite by definition you know is a small part which diffracts coherently and here we have a grain but the thing is that a single grain may comprise many crystallites so clearly in this case we can state that a crystallite is smaller than a grain but in case of nanoparticles crystallite is small but the grain is also small so there are possibilities that in single grain there is only one crystallite in that case the crystallite size and the grain size are equal the same may happen in the case of single crystals in the case of single crystal the size of crystallite is big so as the grain is also big but we can say that that the crystallite is the same as the grain but in that case in xrd you will get a sharp peak through which it is very hard to determine the size of your crystallite you can also draw a comparison between crystallite grain and particle simultaneously in different cases thanks for watching the development of this stuff takes a lot of study and time but the audience is quite limited so it would be highly appreciated if you support me by donating you can find my account details in the description or you can share my video with at least 5 people in your contact thanks for watching have a good day